Before this video starts, I just want to say I really like talking about movies and shows, and Agents of the Shield is one of my favorite things. So, leave a comment down below. Tell me what I should watch. Tell me what I should review. Tell me what I should record. I really want to do stuff that you guys want to see. So tell me what, leave me recommendations in the comments, what movies or shows I should watch. Let me know. Hey guys, so, you know, we're back with another Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. video. Um, I'm honestly considering just making a second channel at this point for all of my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. related content. But, until then, it's gonna come out on this channel. So today, I want to talk about one crucial arc of the show been my favorite ever since it came out and it's the framework arc in season four the framework arc is well honestly at this point if you're still watching the video i'm assuming you're a fan of the show so i'm just gonna go into full spoiler territory so the team has dropped into this alternate reality where all of this all of their regrets have been fixed and this throws just everything for a loop this arc is so well crafted and such a slow burn of twists and turns and shocking shocking moments it it's so good it's easily one of the best science fiction related stories ever written but let's get into it the first episode daisy wakes up in the framework she finds out that her framework boyfriend is ward because yay Agent Ward and she's obviously skeptical of him yada 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 until she realizes that wait in this alternate reality where Hydra has taken over instead of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ward is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. working undercover in Hydra it's like so that's it's just everything's flipped Coulson's a school teacher, Max a dad, which was hinted at earlier in the season when they mentioned Hope for the first time. Um, Simmons is dead. Fitz is reconnected with his father and is now the head of Hydra, which is, you know, a fun twist. Yeah, it's always fun when your most lovable Scottish-British character is the head of Hydra. Makes for an interesting, interesting little, little storyline. May is also like the number three at Hydra. But anyways, this storyline is a is an amazing look into why regret is important and why it's crucial to have that in your life. The biggest example is May. May regrets what happened to the girl in Bahrain who died because of her. She had to kill the little girl because she was an inhuman and she was hurting people. She didn't have any other choice. She lived with that regret for years. In the framework, Radcliffe fixed that regret and as a result it triggered this whole series of events where inhumans were hunted. Now, the, this, this is the biggest most obvious example of why regret is important. But, some some of them are not as terrible for other people. For example, Mac. Mac's biggest regret is that his daughter died and that he didn't get to spend time with her. She was very sick from the moment she was born and she, she died at a really, really young age, just days old. In the framework, Mac's, the, Mac's regret is fixed. He's with his daughter. He's gotten to spend, and by the way, I'm just putting scenes in the background. Hi, Jeffrey Mace. I'm putting scenes in the background just while I'm talking. But Ma Mac's biggest regret was that he never got to spend time with his daughter. And in the framework, he does. And he's an amazing dad. That's an example of a regret that it's fixed. And it honestly is not hurting anybody. It's not making anybody sad. It's just helping people. It's just making Mac a better person because he has his daughter. Coulson's biggest regret, which surprised me when I first watched it, was joining S.H.I.E.L.D. And that Coulson's biggest regret, in my opinion, joining S.H.I.E.L.D. ties into this entire narrative of the framework. That you can make a difference, you just need to be brave enough to do it. 
And with Gemma and Daisy coming into the framework to rescue the rest of the team, they jog Framework Coulson into that mindset of he can make a difference. He'd been afraid of it, that's why he didn't join S.H.I.E.L.D. But once he realizes who he is, because he still has memories from the outside world because of the Tahiti project and a lot of other stuff that messed with his brain, once he realizes who he is, that memory is jogged for him, and he's able to remember what happened, he's able to remember who he is, and he becomes that hero. In this scene right here, he says, My name is Phil Coulson. I'm an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. After giving a long speech about how to be a hero and what it means to be a hero and how he, he can... how it, it doesn't matter who you are, it just matters what you do. That there are more heroes than there are bad people. There are more of us than there are more of them. And I think this message, this lesson that this series of episodes is giving is really important. That you're not defined by your past, you're not defined by mistakes you've made, you're defined by your actions. And how you choose to do your actions based off of what's happening to you. And the framework fits his complete and utter insert bad word here that I can't say. Because YouTube will, will will kick me off. The will kick me off YouTube. But in the framework, Fitz is bad. He's a bad guy. He's the head of Hydra. And this is because of his da his dad's influence on his life. If Fitz didn't have his dad's influence, he would not be the head of Hydra. He would have been the Fitz that we all know. He, well, he, if he didn't have his dad's influence, and if Ada hadn't inserted herself in his life at well, during the beginning moments of his life or beginning moments of his agents of shield of, of his shield academy life yes my brain is functioning guys i'm good in this scene right here Gemma's forced to grapple with the fact that fitz is not who he was in the outside world She's telling Ward, don't take the shot, don't take the shot. He's not going to kill her. He's not going to kill Agnes. And Ward, he's, he's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to take out this person who's caused so much hate and fear. But Gemma begs him not to. And she brings up all this stuff about Fitz in, his, in real life and how she loves him, how he's a hero. And then it all falls apart. Radcliffe is almost getting to Fitz in this scene. He almost convinces him that he doesn't and he shouldn't kill Agnes. And then all Ada needs to do is lift a finger. She's like, hello Fitz. Hello Fitz, I lift a finger, you listen to me now. And then he kills Agnes. And in this really heartbreaking scene. It it just shows how one simple decision one simple choice leads you down a path. Fitz's decision to listen to his stupid father, his stupid deadbeat father, led him down a path. Even he, he his, it is his father. He definitely loves him, but he isn't realizing that he's being manipulated to do these terrible things by two people who clearly don't care about him. Or who at least think that by telling him to do these awful things and getting him to do these awful things, that they're helping him. Because in this scene, Fitz doesn't want to do it. At least it seems like he doesn't want to. He's goaded on by Ada. And Radcliffe doesn't... Radcliffe really tries his best. But Ada's, str str Ada's stranglehold over Fitz is just too much. I'm just I can hear the audio of the scene playing in my head as I'm watching it but this scene is such an important early moment in the framework well let's let's move forward a bit and well I, we'll move forward a bit right after the scene he he kills he kills Agnes he kills Radcliffe's wife who's also what Ada was based off of 
but the most crucial person in the framework, for me at least, is not Coulson, is not Fitz, is not Simmons, is not Daisy, is not any of them. It's Jeffrey Mace. Jeffrey Mace is one of the most important characters in this framework. Because while he, in the in real in real life he wanted to be a hero he wanted so desperately to be this good person this person who could be like the avengers could save people but he wasn't he wasn't the hero that everybody thought he was but he wanted to be he wanted to be this good person he wanted to be this perfect person that people thought that he was so he used super serum he augmented himself but in the framework that regret's gone he is a hero. He's the patriot that everyone looks up to. And for him, his regret ended up fixing... His regret ended up resolving itself in the most tragic way. He saved... He saved the life of a bunch of kids. He saved... A, he held up a building to save a bunch of kids so that they wouldn't die. And then he sacrificed himself for them. Which, while it's tragic, it's exactly the way Jeffrey Mace would have gone out in real life if he did actually have inhuman powers. It's the perfect ending for a character who's been so conflicted the entire season. And I think that's the biggest thing in the framework, is seeing how all the regrets and all the subtle problems and struggles that these characters have gone through for the first four seasons of the show. It all comes to a head here, but it also breeds new ones. Fitz is traumatized by what he's done in the framework. And May, May comes to terms with what happened in Bahrain, but she's traumatized by what she did here. And she eventually, once the Patriot sacrifices himself, she sees it. She sees it happen in front of her. This person that she thought was a horrible monster sacrifices himself for her, and she's forced to grapple with that. May, who's this closed-off person in the real world, she's forced to grapple with the fact that not everything is what it seems, and that the people that she fights against sometimes are not the monsters that they seem like they are. And that breeds into season six, with the fake, with the with Sarge and the fake Coulson, and how she eventually almost dies because of him, it's everything is connected. The framework is such a crucial arc for for the show, and it's also just an important arc that people should watch. It's so well done, and so important that it just is the best arc of the show. Period. Except for maybe, like, some of the Season 7 stuff, but we'll talk about that in another video. I just really wanted to make a video on the framework because I absolutely love this, these episodes. I've watched them over and over again. Um, leave a comment down below what you guys think I should talk about next. I know a lot of people don't really watch my movie reviews or my TV show reviews, but tell me what you want to see. Tell me what you want me to review. I'll watch movies that you guys want me to review. I really like talking about movies and shows, and I want to share that interest with you guys. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. Uh, I noticed on my last Agents of Shield video, only 65% of the people weren't. 65% uh, of the people weren't subscribed. So, like, subscribe for more Agents of Shield stuff, and have a nice day. Bye, everybody.